up guys, Mitch 42 here, and welcome to Kazawa Shoujo. Um, as you guys know, this has been the big talk for the last couple days, um, whether it had been on Twitter or on YouTube. Um, I already made a full, like, really long video about this, but the basis is, um, is that this is a game I've been wanting to play for a very long time on the channel. I did play it a long time ago, uh, I think back when the channel first started, actually. I played it for, like, three episodes. Um... And this one hits home because living with metal cold disorder and stuff, uh, I know that feeling. Um, f for the characters, it's obviously a bit different than what I have, um, but I know the feeling of living with disabilities and medical stuff like that. Um, if you haven't seen the video that I made about the game and me talking about medical disorders and stuff like that, uh, make sure to check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, and yeah, we're gonna jump right in. Katawa Shoujo, if you've never seen it, it is a fantastic visual novel. Um, it's actually my favorite. I think I've only played a couple. I'm not a real big fan of this genre. It's not something I normally would play. Um, but the story, the characters, the art, the music, everything in this game is just fantastic. And you guys are in for a wonderful ride. This game is fantastic. And I cannot wait to play it. Uh, so, let's just jump right in here. Uh, also, I'm recording with OBS for the first time in a long time. I usually use OBS for streams. I don't use it for recordings. Except DX Story was not wanting to work with this game for some reason. Um, so if my audio is a bit off, I apologize. I was trying to get it to a decent level to where the music and everything wasn't too loud and you guys could hear everything perfectly. So let's pray I did a good job. <laughs> ah, like it is outside right now in my life. A light breeze causes the naked branches overhead to rattle like wooden wind chimes. This is a popular retreat for couples in the summer. The deedious, uh, this is going to be an issue of the whole series is English. The desidus trees provide a beautiful green canopy, far out of sight of teachers and fellow students. But now, in late winter, it feels like I'm standing under a pile of kindling. I breathe into my cupped hands and rub them together furiously to prevent them from numbing in this cold. Just how long am I expected to wait out here, anyway? I'm sure the note said 4pm. Ah, yes. The note. Slipped between the pages of my math book while I wasn't looking. As far as cliches go, I'm more of a fan of the letter in the locker, but at least this way shows a bit of in initiative. Uh, initiative. As I ponder the meaning of the note, the snowfall gradually thickens. The snowflakes silently falling from the white painted sky are the only sign of time passing in the stagnant world. Their slow descent upon the frozen forest makes it seem like time is slow to a crawl. The rustling of thri a dry snow underfoot startles me, interrupting the quiet mood. Someone is approaching me from behind. H hi the sow You came? A hesitating, barely audible question. However, I recognize the owner of that dainty voice instantly. I feel my heart skip a beat. It's a voice I've listened to hundreds of times, but never as more than an eavesdropper to a conversation. I turn to face this voice. The voice of my dreams, and my heart begins to race. Ah, oh, the art. Oh, it's so good for such an old game. It recently, uh, before we continue here, it just hit six years anniversary a couple days ago. I believe the game was originally dropped in, uh, oh god, six years ago. So it's 2012. I believe it was January 4th or 2nd. It was one of those two dates. I can't remember exactly what. Um, but I followed the Twitter and stuff like that, so I, I know, I know what I do. Iwanako? I got a note telling me to wait here. It was yours? Damn it. I spent all afternoon trying to come up with a good line and that was the result. Pathetic. Mm-hmm. Yes, I asked a friend to give you that note. I'm so glad you got it. A shy, joyous smile that makes me so tense I couldn't move a single muscle even if I tried. My heart is pounding now, as if it were trying to burst out from my chest and claim this girl for itself. So, uh, here we are, out in the cold. Once again, the wind stirs up the branches. The cacophonous <laughs> noise is music to my ears. Iwanako flinches ever so slightly against the gust of wind. As it passes, she writes herself as if supported by some new confidence. Her eyes lock with mine, and she lazily twirls her long, dark hair around her finger. All the while, the anxious beating of my heart grows louder. 
My throat is tight. I doubt I could even force a word out if I tried. You see, I wanted to know if you'd go out with me. I stand there, motionless, save for my heart, for my pounding heart. I want to say something in reply. My vocal cords feel like they've been stretched beyond the breaking point. Sal? I reach up to try to massage my throat, but this only sends spikes of blinding pain along my arms. Hassau? My whole body freezes, save for my eyes, which shoot open in terror. Hassau? Oh, that was the best yell I could think of. The beating in my chest suddenly stops, and I go weak at the knees. The world around me, the canopy of bare branches, the dull winter sky, it would not go running towards me. All these fade to black. The last thing I remember, the last things I remember before slipping away are the sounds of Omanako screaming for help and the incessant clatter of the branches above. What an opening. <laughs> now, like I've said, this game is very long. I've beaten this game several times. I know the story. Um, but there are a few girls in this game I didn't beat, which is the point of this playthrough, is to play one of them that I haven't beat yet. There's even some animations going on now. Like, this is a pretty old visual novel. I, I say old because it was six years ago. Um, but this is fantastic. It really lives up to the age and everything like that. It's really beautiful and everything like that. And really hits you at home. Especially if you deal with medical problems and stuff like that. Um, but in case you're wondering what just happened, um... Hassau did have a heart attack, um, which you will learn more about as the story progresses. Um, you're going to learn everything in a second here as we go through this little animation showing off a uh, hospital and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so our character just had a heart attack and was most certainly rushed to a hospital. Um, and yeah, and then we will, we will see what happens from here on out as the story progresses. Yeah, reading reading in the series is gonna be uh it's gonna be my downfall. <laughs> it's been four months since my heart attack. In that whole time, I could probably count the times I've left this hospital room unsupervised on one hand. Four months is a pretty long time when you're left alone with your thoughts. So I've had plenty of time to come to terms with my situation. Arrhythmia. Hope I pronounced that right, by the way. <laughs> a strange word. A foreign alien one. One that you don't want to be in the same room with. A rare condition. It causes the heart to act erratically and occasionally beat way too fast. It can be fatal. Apparently, I've had it for a long time. They said it was a miracle that I was able to go on so long without anything happening. Is that really a miracle? Alright, snow trucks. <laughs> you can probably hear that outside, it's very loud. Uh, I guess it was supposed to make me feel better. More appreciative of my life? It really didn't do anything to cheer me up. My parents, I think, were harder were hit harder with by the news than I was. They practically had two hemorrhoid hemorrhages apiece. I had already had a full day by then to digest everything. To them it was all fresh. They were even willing to sell our house in order to pay for a cure. Now that's a good family. Of course, there isn't a cure. Because of the late discovery of this condition, I've had to stay at the hospital to recuperate from the treatments. When I was first admitted, it felt as if I was missed. For about a week, my room in the ward was full of flowers, balloons, and cards. But the visitors soon dwindled, and all the get well gifts began trickling down to nothing shortly after. I realized that the only reason I had gotten so many cards and flowers was because sending me their sympathy had been turned into a class project. Maybe some people were generally concerned, but I doubt it. Even in the beginning, I barely had visitors. By the end of the first month, only my parents came by on a regular basis. Iwanaku was the last to stop visiting. After six weeks, I never saw her again. We never had that much to talk about when she visited anyway. We didn't touch the subject that was between us on that snowy day ever again. The hospital. It's not really a place I'd like to live in. The doctors and nurses feel so impersonal and faceless. I guess it's because they are in a hurry and they have a million other patients waiting for them, but it makes me feel uncomfortable. For the first month or so, I asked the head cardiologist every time I saw him for a rough estimate of when I'd be able to leave. He never answered anything in a straightforward way, but told me to wait and see if the treatment and surgeries worked. 
So I idly observed the scar that those surgeries had left on my chest slowly change its appearance over time, thinking of it as some kind of an omen. I still ask the head cardiologist about leaving, but my expectations are low enough now that I'm not disappointed anymore when I don't get a reply. The way he shuffles around the answers shows that there is at least some hope. At some point he stopped watching TV. I don't know why, I just did. Maybe it was the wrong kind of escapism for my situation. I started reading instead. There was a small library at the hospital, but though it was more like a storeroom for books. I began working my way through it, one small stack at a time. After consuming them, I would go back for more. I found that I liked reading, and I think e I even became a little bit addicted. I started feeling naked without a book in my hands, but I loved the stories. That was what my life was like. The days became increasingly harder to digest, to distinguish from each other, differing only by the book I was reading and the weather outside. I felt like time blurred into some kind of gooey mass I was trapped inside instead of moving within. A week could go by without me really noticing it. Sometimes I'd pause in realization that I didn't know what day of the week it was. But other times, all the things that surrounded me would painfully crash into my consciousness through the barrier of nonchalance uh, I had set up for myself. The pages of my book would start to feel sharp and burning hot, and the heaviness in my chest would become so hard to bear that I had to put the book aside and just lay down for a while, looking at the ceiling as if I was going to cry. But that happened only rarely, and I couldn't even cry. God damn it, I forgot how sad this was. <laughs> Today the doctor comes in and gives me a smile. He seems excited, but not very. It's like he was it's like he is trying to make an effort to be happy on my behalf. My parents are here. It's been a few days since I'd last seen them both. Uh both of them are even sort of dressed up. This is supposed to be some kind of special occasion. It's not a party. There is this ritual the head cardiologist has. He takes his time, sorting his papers, then settling them aside as if to make a point at the pointless of what he had just did. Then he casually sits down on the edge of my bed next to mine. He looks me in the eyes for a moment. Hello, Hisao. How are you today? I don't answer him, but I smile a little back at him. I believe that you can go home. Your heart is stronger now, and with some precautions, you should be fine. We have all your medications sorted out. I'll give your father the prescription. The doctor hands a sheet of paper to my dad, whose expression turns wooden as he reads it quickly. So many. I take it from his hand and take a look myself, feeling numb. How am I supposed to react to this? God damn. <laughs> That's a lot of meds. The absurdly long list of medications staring back at me from the paper seems insurmountable. They all blend together into a sea of letters. This is insane. Side effects, adverse effects, contradictions, and dosages are listed line after line with cold precision. I tried to read them, but it's futile. I can't understand any of it, attempting to only make me feel sicker. All this for the rest of my life every day? I'm afraid that is the best we can do at this point. However, new medications are always being developed, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that list fade over the years. Years? What kind of confidence booster is that? It'd have felt better if he didn't say anything at all. Also, I spoke with the parents, and we believe that it would be best if you don't return to your old school. What? Please, calm down, Hisao. Listen to what the doctor has to say. I thought that was the doctor, it was my father. That's awkward. <laughs> calm down. The way he says it, he says it tells me he knew full well that I wasn't going to like it. And I'm going to be homeschooled? Whatever of, my whatever of my concerns show, it's ignored. We all understand that your education is paramount. However... I don't think that it's wise for you to be s without supervision. At least not until we're sure that your medication is suitable. So I've spoken to your parents about a transfer. It's a school called Yamako... Yamaku... Yamaku? Yamaku Academy. That specializes in dealing with disabled students. Disabled? What? Am I? It has a 24 hour nursing, 24 nursing staff, and it's only a few minutes from a highly regarded general hospital. The majority of students live on the campus. Think of it as a boarding school of sorts. It's designed to give students a degree of independence, while keeping help nearby. Independence? It's a school for disabled kids. Don't try to disguise that fact. If it was really that free, there wouldn't be a 24-hour nursing staff, and you wouldn't make a hospital being nearby a selling point. Of course. That's only if you want to go, but your mother and I aren't... Damn it, it's my father. I keep screwing that voice. <laughs> I only want to make that voice for the doctor. Of course, that's only if you want to go, but your mother and I aren't really able to homeschool you. 
we went out there and had a couple and had a look a couple weeks back. I think you'd like it. It looks like I really don't have a choice. Compared to other heart problems, people with your condition usually tend to live long lives. You'll need a job one day, and this is a good opportunity to continue your education. This isn't an opportunity. Don't call it an opportunity. Don't call it a goddamn opportunity. Well, you should be excited at the chance to go back to school. You see, going back to school means you won't have to deal with the snow trucks outside that are constantly going by. It makes it a little less quiet, like, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit quieter, you know, because outside the hospital there's a lot of snow trucks. I remember you wanted to return to school, and while it's not the same one, a special school, that's an insult. That is what I want to say, but it's a step down. It's not what you think. All the students there are pretty active in their own sort of way. It's good towards students that can still get around and learn, but just need a little help in one way or another. Your father's right, and many of the graduates of the school have gone on to do amazing things. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. Damn right! <laughs> One of my colleagues in another hospital is a graduate. I don't care. A person has to be held back with a disability. That's what a disability is. I really hate that something so important was decided for me. Up. Uh, uh. Is there a way to go back? I didn't get to read that last line. Ah, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> it's funny. I'd always thought my life was actually kind of boring, but now I miss it. I want to protest. I want to blame this lack of reaction on shock or fatigue. I could easily yell out something now. Something about how I can go back to my school anyway, but no. I don't say anything. The fact is that I know now it's futile. I look around the room feeling very tired of all this. The hospital, doctors, my condition. I don't see anything that would make me feel any different. There really isn't a choice. I know this, but the thought of going to a disabled school, what are those even like? As much as I try to put a positive spin on this, it's very difficult. But let me try. A clean slate isn't a bad thing. This is all I can think of to get me through this. At least I still have something, even if it is a special school. It's something. It's a fresh start, and my life isn't over. It would be a mistake to just resign myself to thinking that. At the very least, I'll try to see what my new life will look like. Wah! There we go. There is Hassau. Look at him. Act 1. Life Expectancy. Yep, that wasn't even the, the intro, basically. We're, we're still going through the intro. <laughs> I don't think the intro stops until Act 2, which is a while from now. Ooh, happy music. Ah. Alright. The gate looked far too pompous for what it was. In fact, gates in general seem to do that, but this one especially so. Red bricks, black rubbed iron, and gray plaster. Someone into a hole that didn't feel welcoming at all. I wondered if it looked like what a gate for a school should look like, but couldn't really decide. Probably no. Of course, I didn't want to get stuck on thinking about the gate for too long, so I entered through it with a brisk pace that felt surprisingly good. Moving forward feels good. So I walked towards the main building of Yamaku Academy with this brisk pace. I'm alone as my parents are taking my stuff to the dorms, and there's supposed to be someone waiting for me. The grounds are incredibly lush, filled with green. It doesn't feel like the kind of grounds a school would have. More like a park, with a clean walkway going past trees, and... The snow trucks that will slowly disappear over time. Uh, the smell of fresh cut grass and all other park like things. Words like clean and hygienic pop into mind. And pop into my mind, it makes me shudder. I shake them off, stay open minded now. It's your new life. You have to take it as it comes. That's what I tell myself. A few big buildings loom behind the leafy canopies. Too big and too many for just a school. Everything seems off. It's different from what I thought I knew about schools. It's an uncanny valley, even though I was told this is my new school. In the back of my head, it doesn't feel like one. I wonder if the feeling is real or caused by my expectations of a school for the disabled. Speaking of that, I don't see anyone else here. It's kinda eerie. It makes me wish there was somebody here so I could anchor myself to something tangible instead of having these feelings that I step into another dimension. The trees hum with the wind, and the green hues flashing all around me catch my attention. Makes me think about hospitals again, how they say that the operating rooms are painted green because green is a common color. So why am I feeling so anxious despite all this greenery? <sighs> Only after I stand in front of the haunting main building, I surprise myself by realizing why the gate bothered me. It was the last chance I had to turn back, even if I had no life to return to. But still, after entering, there's absolutely no way I can go back anymore. Feeling nervous and with this realization set in my head, I open the front door. A tall man with bad posture notices me as I enter. We're the only people in the lobby, so it's only illogical. 
Uh, you must be, uh, Nina Niki? Nakai? So, uh, you are. <laughs> Excellent. I'm your homeroom and science teacher. My name is Muto. Welcome. We exchange a handshake that is neither firm nor sloppy, and he looks at his watch. The head nurse asked you for a brief check-in visit, but there's no time for that now. Oh, uh, should I go by later? Yes, afternoon is probably fine. We should get going and introduce you to the rest of the class. They're all waiting already. Waiting for me? I don't really like being in the center of attention, but I guess it's inevitable in a situation like this. <sighs> Somehow, not knowing what is waiting for me makes me feel really nervous. Thinking of this, I almost miss what the teacher is saying. Do you want to introduce yourself to the class? Um... Yeah, screw it, let's do it. Yeah, sure, I mean, isn't that normal? Of course, but not everyone likes to be the center of attention. Um, probably one of those people, but I guess I should be the one to give the first impression of myself? Right, but it's no problem. Let's go then. My heart is pounding in my chest, and it keeps me thinking about my condition as I follow the teacher up the stairs. The third door down the third floor corridor is marked as the classroom for Class 3-3. Matau opens the door and enters. Good morning, everyone. Sorry I'm late again. Alright, and uh, we're gonna actually end off here. So, hopefully you guys did enjoy the first episode of Katawa Shoujo. Like I said, this is a very personal series to me. Um, so, I'm very glad to be playing this on the channel and sharing this uh, with you guys. We're ending off here because I want to save meeting everybody to the next episode. Kind of just getting through the basic stuff. And uh, we'll meet everybody next episode. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Crazy 42 Like I said, if you haven't seen the video I posted before this one, make sure to check it out. It's very important and goes in... Uh, pair with this series, so please make sure to go watch it. Um, and yeah, that's it for me. Let me know what you guys think so far. It's Crazy42, and I will see you all in another video.